Okay. Well, I was uh, in college at the Southwest Mississippi Junior College and had been there two years. Uh, and up on completion there, I uh, didn't have the funds or the uh, uh, desire to go on to college. I uh, wanted to see some of the world because I'd never been in a place but uh, Amid County, Mississippi. And so in uh, full of shipping and fraternizing with a Navy recruiter in Macomb, Mississippi, I let him talk me into joining the Navy, which I had never considered before because of my, uh, uh, didn't think I could swim very far, but uh, even though I was a good swimmer. I, uh, so I let him talk me going into the Navy and uh, he talked me into uh, going into communications because it was wide open at the time. Uh, the, the wide open to me and the easy to make rank and uh, had good schools, so I, uh, was signed up and enlisted down in New Orleans, Louisiana, and passed a physical and put on a plane, which it was my first uh, adventure to be ever be on an airplane. And uh, they asked me where I wanted to take my boot training uh, at that time, and uh, I had a choice of Great Lakes, Illinois, or San Diego, California. I said, uh, which one of them is the furthest? And they said, San Diego. I said, that's where I want to go. So. <laughs> They put me on a plane, and I had to go all by myself, all alone, because uh, I don't know, for some reason, the other, I think it was about 15 fellows there were from Alabama and Louisiana and Mississippi at the same time, uh, for reasons that I don't know, uh, didn't make the grade uh, as far as physical or whatever. Anyway, so I had to go by myself, and uh, it was a before the jet plane was used commercially. Uh, so it was a prop job that we rode all the way to San Diego and, and it was not pressurized. I remember my ears uh, being very painful and, and the stewardess uh, spilled coffee all over my new white slacks that I had on in my pink shirt because Elvis was very popular then and I had my belt around to the side, of course, and I had duck tails then. Uh, <laughs> anyway, uh, got to San Diego about 2 o'clock in the morning, and this rude dude, which I found out later was a chief, was yelling and screaming and calling me bad names. <laughs> and uh, I said, well, I believe I done got myself out of one mess into another one. But anyway, uh, uh, boot camp went well. I had a very nice uh, uh, instructor. Uh, I remember he was a chief radarman and his name was Clay, a very kind and compassionate fellow, which was not uh, something that you've seen too often uh, with other uh, boot companies. And, uh, but anyway, boot camp will, went well. Uh, I did uh, contact an Asian flu while I was in there and spent uh, two or three weeks in sick bay with a real high fever, and uh, I uh, didn't remember a whole lot. I was uh, not uh, conscious a lot of the time because the fever was so high, but they, I, the first time I'd ever had an alcohol bath, but they gave me those every day to try to keep the fever down. But anyway, uh, I, I recovered, obviously, and uh, uh, got out of boot camp, went on a 15-day leave back to Mississippi, and uh, and was accepted into RMA school there on San Diego on the base and returned and did my uh, school training there uh, and graduated in March of 58 and had orders to the USS Thomaston, LSD number 28, was a relatively new ship, uh, home ported San Diego. And uh, I spent the remainder of my active duty aboard the USS Thomaston making Westpac cruises uh, and served as a, as a radioman uh, under, uh, I think, three captains. Uh, Captain Callahan was a skipper when I went aboard. Uh, he soon was uh, relieved, and, and uh, Captain Jarvis, uh, which recently, I just, he just passed away a year before last, uh, was captain. 
uh, a large uh, statue of a man from Arkansas. And uh, uh, then after his tour on the Thomaston, I served under Captain Nichols, uh, 